Some famous actors don't necessarily try to keep a clean-cut image, and Yosuke Kubozuka, also known as Japan's bad boy, is definitely one of them. Kubozuka's controversial past began with his role in the movie Go, which was a huge hit in the country. He even took home quite a few awards. For instance, he won the Outstanding Performance by a Lead Actor Award at the Japan Academy Film Prize, which is a very prestigious award in Japan. However, all the fame and glory he got from the movie suddenly started turning into something else. Viewers pointed out there was quite a psychological change noticeable in Kubozuka after he played the role of Sugihara, the Zainichi chosen gene teenager in the movie. It was quite ironic that while he played the role of a character struggling with his identity in Japanese society, Kubozuka himself leaned towards Japanese nationalism. At least this was made seemingly clear in some of the remarks he made. He said, In Go, Korean Japanese Sugihara's identity was born because of the system of the society. Since I was born in Japan and I have been taking it for granted, I didn't think about it. Kubosaka expressed that he felt quite irritated because he couldn't see the whole picture of society. He said that he realized he lives in this society and put extra emphasis on the fact that he is a Japanese person living in Japan. To clear this up a bit, prior to playing Sugihara in Go, Kubozuka was surrounded in an environment where everyone was Japanese. This made him realize how much he takes his national identity for granted. By playing Sugihara, he learned how less well-off people with other identities are, and this made him internalize Japanese nationalistic sentiments. Now that Kubozuka had discovered his identity as a nationalist, he also started acting on it. After his role in Go, he produced a film titled Kyoki no Sakura in 2002. This movie tells the story of a young nationalistic neo-Nazi in Tokyo. Unsurprisingly, Kubozuka took on the role of this nationalistic character himself. This was the beginning of his rebellion against the clean-cut image Japan tried to promote. His actions started to be viewed as weird by the majority of the population. Things only got worse when he started being active in movements regarding the legalization of marijuana. This was another example of him averting himself from the goody two-shoes image that most Japanese actors had to have. The public eventually started heavily criticizing him and accusing him of heavily using marijuana. However, Kubozuka didn't think much of it and even had a wedding in 2003. He married a dancer two years younger than him and the couple had a son in October of the same year. A TV industry source revealed that Kubozuka said that he was taking some time off of work to focus on taking care of his son. The actual reason behind his time off the screen was the fact that he wasn't landing any new roles. At some point, he was getting showered in endorsement deals, but then he was hardly getting any. They also revealed that Kubozuka's agency was trying to get him to accept parts in TV shows that weren't dramas. However, this didn't really work out either. They explained that he landed a role on a travel TV show, but there was a lot of trouble while filming. Eventually, his agency decided that these types of programs were not a good match for him. His career took on an even bigger hit after an incident in 2004. In June of that year, Kubozuka was reported to have fallen from the balcony of his ninth floor apartment in Yokohama. On Sunday afternoon, he was transported to a neighboring hospital while still conscious, but at the time, there was no additional information on his condition. He ended up surviving the incident because of a fence-like roof near the bottom of the 26 meter drop that seemingly broke his fall. Eventually, he ended up on a lawn. The police were investigating the incident and didn't rule out a possible attempt to take his own life. His agency was quick to release a statement regarding the fall. On June 7, 2004, they revealed that the incident was caused by carelessness. Infinity Inc. said in a statement that Kubozuka fell while attempting to unhook a device from the balcony to hold fabric carp streamers. On June 8th, the public was updated on his recovery. Due to the fall, he broke quite a few bones and had to stay in the hospital for a while. However, he was conscious again and apologized to the public for making them worry. After this nine-story fall, his reputation only kept deteriorating. People weren't believing the fact that this incident was caused due to carelessness. A renowned Japanese magazine titled Shukan Jitsua posted a headline in which they wrote, even if he wasn't trying to end his life, his career standing in Japan's fickle entertainment world can expect to plummet. Many people were debating whether he accidentally fell or deliberately jumped. It's safe to say that he was the talk of the country for quite a while and not in a good way. Even celebrity insiders told the magazine that it looked more like a botched attempt than an actual accident. Reportedly, a woman who witnessed Kubozuka's fall was so shocked by what she saw that she couldn't even put it into words when she was speaking to reporters. This once again raised suspicion with the public. Someone commented, it's almost as though she's being told to keep quiet in case she says something that will destroy Kubozuka's career. Some internet users revealed that it wouldn't be out of character for him to actually try to take his own life. Allegedly, he blows up very fast at the slightest provocation. People have also accused him of threatening to take his own life when he was having arguments with his wife. Saying that Kubozuka can be violent sometimes might not be so much of a reach. Reportedly, he attacked a paparazzi cameraman and the victim pressed charges for this. Allegedly, the punishment for this would have been jail time, which Kubozuka escaped 
escaped by paying loads of money to silence the victim and the authorities. In July 2012, Kubosika announced that he and his wife separated after nine years of being together. He released a statement on his official website revealing that the two got divorced a month earlier. He wrote, It was about nine years of married life, but after talking things through with my wife, we decided to think about our child first. He revealed that it was a peaceful divorce, and after doing some thinking, him and his wife decided that it would be best for both of them and their son if they were no longer together. Kubosika also revealed that the two had already lived apart. Apparently, they have lived separately since March of 2011, which means the only change this divorce would bring is the fact that they're no longer legally husband and wife. He expressed that he would continue to support his wife and her dance school, regardless of their circumstances. Kubosika got full custody over their son, but on his website, he revealed that it's important for their son to grow up with both parents. He said, But a child has two parents, a father and mother. That attitude won't change, as we will devote ourselves together. After his first relationship ended, he quickly got into another. On December 16th, 2015, Kubosika quickly took to Twitter to reveal that he was going to marry his girlfriend, Pinky. He said that 2015 marks the year of his 20th anniversary in the entertainment industry of his Hollywood debut, and it's the year he released his best album as a reggae artist. He expressed that he hoped to end the year with a marriage to the girl he had been dating for three years. Reportedly, the two started dating immediately after Kubosika got divorced from his previous wife. The two then got spotted kissing at an airport in 2013. The two eventually got married, and in June, his wife posted a picture in which she was showing off her pregnant belly. She wishes Kubosika a happy Father's Day two days before the birth of their daughter. Pinky gave birth to their daughter Amato on June 20th. These past few years seem to be going better for Kubosika. He appeared in a few films, but his main focus was on pursuing a career in reggae music by the name Manji Line. The Manji symbol can be seen as quite controversial. Nowadays, it's widely recognized for its association with Nazi Germany and neo-Nazis. Given Kubosika's past nationalistic remarks, this might not have been the best logo for him to choose. Apart from this, Kubosika managed to stay away from drama for quite a while, at least until 2020. On September 11th, 2020, it was reported that Kubosika made remarks regarding Issei Ayusuke's marijuana charges. Yusuke got arrested for marijuana possession, and Kubosika had his two cents to give. He said that there are far worse people on earth than Yusuke, and that people should stop antagonizing him for his arrest for marijuana possession. The media were quick to report that Kubosika was defending Yusuke, and he faced lots of backlash for this. Eventually, Kubosika decided to speak up about the situation. With his views on the media, Kubosika has also left quite a bad impression with the public. He wrote, As usual, the damn media seems to not be reporting the facts again, so I will send my message here. He revealed that he agrees that crime is a crime, but that people should not forget that there is an option for rehabilitation. He believes that media coverage of difficult to prove facts will negatively affect people and do them great harm to their reputation. He adds that marijuana, which is widely accepted in other countries, has been proven to have several benefits. His pro-drug attitude has got Kubozika in trouble before, so perhaps this wasn't the smartest remark to make. That was all on Yosuke Kubozika's controversial life. Comment your thoughts down below. Thank you for watching. Bye!